So, invite you guys, if y'all would, to take out your Bibles today. You guys got your Bibles with you? You got those? Hold those up real quick. You got them? You got those all across the room? Good, good, good. Turn over. Man, we're going to be in Old Testament today. I want you to go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Go to Psalms right there in the middle. Take a right. Keep going. You're going to hit Daniel. Daniel chapter 3 is where we're going to be camping out today. Our very first week... That we started talking about suffering, we talked about that God is going to take us through. Say through. God is going to take us through difficulties. He's going to take us through the flames. He's going to take us through the hardship. He's going to take us through the storm. My friends, I want you to hear something. If you find yourself in a storm, don't set up base camp. God says, I'm going to take you through and in that, that very first week, we looked at briefly, we looked at the story of three guys, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Every time when I'm writing in my notes, uh, uh, Bishop, I don't know if you do this, but when I, when I write in my notes, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I just write SMA every time. So my notes, there's SMA. SMA said this. So today we're going to look at SMA. We're going to look at these guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because I truly believe this. This is a word that has the potential to really mess us up in a beautiful way. And I pray that God would do just that. Daniel chapter 3, the scripture starts off and it says this. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. And he set it up on the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, the uh, prefects, the governors, the advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image that he had set up. So the satraps, the perfect... All those guys, once again, they show up to the dedication and they stood before it. Verse 4, then they heard, uh, uh, then the herald loudly, herald loudly proclaimed, nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, all kinds of music. You must fall down and worship the image of gold that the king Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Verse 7, therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kind of music, all the nations and the people of every language fell down and they worshiped the image of gold that Nebuchadnezzar had sent up. Now, just recap. You got Nebuchadnezzar who is in Babylon. He's the king. And at this point, what he did was he set up an idol made of gold to honor himself. Little pride. Hmm. How tall is this thing? This thing is 90 feet tall. It is 9 feet wide. And what he told all the people to do was this. He said, listen, He brought all of his officials together. He brought all the important people around him in his government. And he said, here it is, guys. I'm going to tell you what what to do, and then I want you to go out there, and I want you to tell the people what they need to do. And so he told them, he said, when y'all hear all these musical instruments hit, everybody is to bow down, and they are to worship this golden image. Folks, I hope that today you will take this message and you will see how it, it's today. This message that we are looking at that happened in Babylonian times with King Nebuchadnezzar, this is such a snapshot of what is taking place today. The king brought in his royal people. He brought in all of his leadership. He said, here's what I want you to tell the people to do. Now go tell the people. Now when they hear these instruments take off everybody is to fall and they are to worship this false god well here's the problem problem was is that not only did you have babylonians in the city you also had jews you had people who followed jehovah god you had the hebrew children now here's the problem they had you got a king right and the king's the authority But the king said to them, I want you to do something that a higher authority 
has told you not to do. You see, in the Word of God, there's what's called the Shema. The Shema is when, when people ask Jesus, Jesus, there's a lot of stuff inside of the Bible. Hey, can you kind of nail it down for us for dummies, all right? Can you give us Bible for dummies? What do we do? Can you bottom line it? He simply said the Shema. He said, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. You will have no other gods before me. You will love your neighbor as yourself. That's the, what's called the Shema. Here's the problem. The king said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to worship this idol. But a higher authority said, this is what you're to do. You're to worship the Lord, your God, only. So what do you do when one authority tells you to do something, but God tells you to do something else? And inside of this situation, this is, this is the story that we see. And, and so here's what ends up taking place. And, and, and I'm going to say this again. That's why I told you guys earlier, when you vote, don't vote your conscience. Your, your conscience can change. But Scripture doesn't. So when we vote, you need to vote Scripture. Okay, bottom line. Here's what you had. You ended up having some of these people living there in Babylon who were not pleased with these Jewish people coming in and taking their jobs and getting better jobs than them. Look at verse 8. At this time, some astrologers came forward and they denounced the Jews. You see, what was taking place was the Jews were getting some of the better jobs. Can, can I just say this? Listen to me. I want you to hear this. If you're a son, if you're a daughter of God, there is, a, there is a favor, there is an anointing that is on you, and there is a favor, my friends, that you and I have access to and is upon us. And some people might be, and I'm just going to tell you this, there are going to be times that you're going to receive something that other people, maybe they were there at the job longer, they didn't get. Somebody else should have got this job. You ended up getting that job. Well, that's not fair. No, it's not. It's favor. Joseph, Joseph never should have been the right-hand man to Pharaoh. It's not fair, but it was favor. I want you to understand something, but Scott, it, it, all those people of Babylon, aren't, aren't they children of God? Aren't we all children of God? No. I just jacked with some of y'all Sunday school class. Can I say this in love? We're not all God's children. We're all God's creation. It is not until we receive forgiveness and grace through Jesus Christ that according to John chapter 1 verse 12, that then we become sons and daughters of God. Well, what was I before? You were his creation. And isn't it beautiful? People will say, Scott, I just can't believe. It's difficult to believe. I, I have trouble believing that, 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 that God is saying, there's just one way. Listen, I rejoice. There's a way. I told you guys, um, I'm a meat eater, not a sweet eater. I will do some dessert time to time. Dig me some ice cream. When my kids were little, it was quite the adventure to take all four kids to the ice cream shop. We'd go in there and go into Baskin Robbins, Brahms. Kids immediately, man, straight to that glass window, right? <sighs> Here's Ben, man. He gets his Rocky Road. Here's... Here's Sam, he gets vanilla. Here's Zach, he gets bubble gum. Here's Claire, she just wants three piles of whatever with sprinkles on it. That's exactly right. Now, if, if, if you got kids, you got grandkids, y'all know what happens there, right? They, de oh, they devour it. It's gone. And you're sitting there with yours as an adult, right? No leakage. Keep it symmetrical. We're and once a kid has devoured their ice cream, what do they do? They look at yours. And every one of my children, Dad, 
Can we have some of your ice cream? It's part of being a dad. So you do. You take your ice cream, and you go over, here's some for Ben, here's some for Sam, here's some for Zach, here's some for Claire, right? Now, let's just pretend. Let's pretend for a moment. I'm doing this, and all of a sudden, somebody else walks in. Another kid walks into Brahms. Right? And he sees a line of kids, and he, so he, I'm getting line. And, oh, dude, this is a great line. Everybody's getting a lick of ice cream. So I go to Ben, I go to Sam, I go to Zach, I go to Claire, and I'm like, I'm sorry, who are you? Now, here's the deal. Is this a bad kid? No, I don't think so. I don't know anything about the kid. Here's the reality. He's not mine. God so loved the world that he gave for all. But my friends, there, is, there are blessings, there are favor that rest on his sons and his daughters. Is it he doesn't like these people? No, it's not the will of God that any should perish, but that all will come to a saving knowledge of Christ. But those sons and daughters, not creation, those sons and daughters, there's a blessing. And can I tell you something? That's what was happening to the Hebrew children. Those Hebrew children, man, they had the blessing of God. And can I tell you who noticed it? The king did. The king. I mean, the the king's not sitting there going, you know what? I think he has Jesus in his life. No. He just knew there was something different about those guys. In fact, he didn't just bring him into Babylon to serve. He brought him into the courts because he knew there was something different different about them. And the astrologers, they weren't pleased with it. Can I, can I just go ahead and say this real quick? If you make a decision to follow God and to line up with God as opposed to line up with what the world system has to say, there are going to be people upset with you. You don't believe me? This afternoon, go online. Find a social media format, go into it, and just go ahead and proclaim. God is the creator of life, and man does not have the right to take the life of a baby. And let's see how popular you are. Hey, 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 why don't you this afternoon go ahead and go online and just go ahead and type in, God doesn't make mistakes. He makes boys, boys, and he makes girls, girls. Is, is, is it going to throw you off? Because l- let me just go ahead and say this real quick, and I'm saying this in pure love. If we line up with the things of God, the world is not going to celebrate it. And in fact, what ended up happening was the Scripture says that the astrologers, they ran to the king and they said, Oh, king, hey, you remember those guys? And I love how they put this. Do you remember those guys you hired? Well, when all the musical instruments went off, they didn't bow. And the scripture says that the king calls them into his court. Look at verse 13. It says, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned so that these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to him, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of instruments, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I have made, very good. But if you do not worship it, You will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue rescue you from my hand? I want you to notice that word right there at the very beginning in verse 13. Furious with rage. The world system does not want us just to acknowledge certain beliefs. The world system wants us to wave the banners. The world system wants us to support and cheer on, but what if those things go against God? And that was the situation here. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, 
we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Whoa! Did you grab that verse? See, see what happened was Nebuchadnezzar, he, he set up the idol. Hey, everybody worship when you hear the music. And all of a sudden, we got some of the Hebrew children over here. We're not going to worship the things that the world worships. We've got God. We've got a higher authority. And we're not going to fall. We're going to stand up for what God told us to stand up for. The astrologers, they go and squeal. Oh. Those Hebrew children. King calls them in. This, the, the king dug these guys. I, I truly believe that. The king was liking these guys. Why? Because he could have just had them killed right there. The moment that the astrologers came in and said, hey, king, these guys didn't bow, he could have said, just kill them. But what did he do? He goes, call them in. Let me have a chat with them. And so they, they, they came in, and when the king said, hey, guys, listen, maybe you didn't get the memo. Uh, check your junk mail, because maybe, you know, it went there. But um, I sent out this message saying everybody needs to bow, and I got word that you didn't. So um, let's try it again. And look at the response of the Hebrew children. I said, king. We don't even need to respond to you. You already know our answer. Their character was so strong that they said, King, you already know how we're going to respond. Can I ask this, ladies? Married ladies in this place, quick question. I know there are so many of you in this room, you know your husband so well that many of you ladies can finish sentences before they do. There are some of you women, you know your husband, what they're going to say before they even say it. You know him that well. Me and Renee. Renee knows me so well that when we go out to eat, she knows I'm not a huge dessert eater. But from time to time, I like dessert. And so when the guy goes, well, do you guys want to see the dessert menu? I'm always the guy going, yeah, I at least want to see it. And then Renee's game chimes in. This is Renee's game. She looks at the dessert menu, and she will pick out the one. she goes, go, here's the one he'd want. She, already, she knows me that well. The king knew the character of the Hebrew children so well that the three Hebrew children were able to say, we don't even need to answer you. Can I ask you this question this morning? Do people know your character? Do people know who you are and what you stand up for? Because in this scenario, they were able to say that exactly to them. They already know me. And I'm going to tell you this. Is our character strong enough that people know this about you? Because reality is, if people know your character, can I just go ahead and say this to you in love? Can I explain to, to some of you why something has happened in your life? That's why there are certain invitations that don't come your way. Students in this room, there may be certain parties that you don't get invited to. You know why? Because they know you. They already know your character. They, know, they already know that you're not going to be going to that kind of party. And so that invitation is not going to come. Can I tell you this for us adults? There are going to be times. There are going to be times you won't be invited to certain little cliques of people standing around telling inappropriate jokes. Why? Because they know your character. And in this situation right here, they knew the character of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the king was hoping. Oh, he was hoping. He gave them another chance. He was hoping that they would change their mind. I want you to hear this. When it comes to us being tested, our character, our integrity being tested, can I tell you this? It's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing. Because the king... He gave them another chance, hoping, hoping that this time Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
would submit to the things of the world instead of standing on the principles of God. And I'll tell you something. You, you may have got tested a couple of weeks ago, something about your character, not to cheat on that test, not to be able to take those supplies from the office home, what, what, whatever it is. But the truth is you and I will continually have tests of our character. And for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were able to look at the king and say, look, we do not need to defend ourselves. My life backs up what I believe. Then in verse 17, this, con this continues. In verse 17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said this, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. What there, did you see that first part? My God is able to deliver me from this. This is where those guys stood with their character. If you throw us into the flames, our God is able to deliver us. I love that because they're sitting there going, look, I see the circumstances, those flames. I'm sure they could see the furnace right there. But they sat there and said, hey, king, here's the deal. Our God can, whoa, those are some hot flames. But our God can deliver us. Those were men of faith. To be able to say, I know that my God can. And you know what? You're a man. God can certainly deliver us from your hand. To compare my God to man? That's no big deal at all. In fact, I, can I tell you what? That's a beautiful picture of right there in that moment. Do we honor, submit more to God? Or do we honor, submit, and fear man more? Because unbeknownst to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 600 years later, Jesus is going to make this statement about who do you fall before? Who are you more concerned about? Whose opinion is stronger? Whose opinion of you is greater in your life? Is it God or is it man? Because 600 years later, Jesus is going to write these words in Matthew 10, 28, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Peter in the first century church, when he was brought in before the courts, and they said, hey, dude, stop talking about Jesus. Peter's response, I love this. Peter's response was, we must obey God rather than human beings. And then, baby, go back to the Old Testament. Go back to the Old Testament with the very first king of Israel. Go back to, uh, to, to the book of Samuel, and you've got King Saul who was there. And, and King Saul made a final, he was messing up, he was blowing it. And his final mess up, this is what he said. Listen to these words. In 1 Samuel 15, uh, 24, Saul said this, King Saul, I have indeed transgressed the commands of the Lord and of your word, and he's talking to the prophet, of your word, because I feared the people and I listened to their voice. Let me give you a verse that so many of us need to grab hold of. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says this, the fear of man brings a snare. But he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted. Did you grab that this morning? Because here's, the, here's my question to you individually. What's more important to you? What God thinks about you and says about you? Or what man says about you? For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, our God is able to deliver us. And he'll certainly deliver us from you. 
But look at verse 18. Look at verse 18. But even if he doesn't. Did you just grab that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were looking at the king who says, I'm going to throw you in this furnace unless you guys bow. SMA, man, they say this. They said, we don't even need to answer you. You already know our response. But let me just go ahead and give you a little bit more information. Our God, our God, our God is able to deliver us from that difficult situation. But even if he doesn't, How many of us, our faithfulness to God is dependent upon God moving in the way that we think he should? How many people I've met who've walked away from their relationship with God because God didn't answer a prayer that they earnestly prayed? People that I have met and talked to who walked away from God, walked away from that intimacy, walked away that relationship because God didn't answer in the timing they thought he should. My friends, is your relationship, is your walk with Christ dependent on God answering prayers the way you think they should go and in the timing that you think they should be? Because if that's the case, my friends, what we're doing is we're putting a gun to God's head. What we're doing is we are blackmailing God. And we're simply saying this, if you don't, then I won't. Verse 17, if we are thrown into the burning furnace... The God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. In life, my friends, we will go through storms, and some of those storms have the threat of flames. And I'll just, can I just go ahead and throw this out, just rip open my chest cavity and say this? I may not understand all of God's ways, but my trust is in God, not in my understanding of all his ways. Now, seriously, can, can I just read that to you just one more time real quick? Because I may not understand all of God's ways, but my trust is in God, not in my understanding of all of his ways. Verse 19, the Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. What happened? Hey, I like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Invite those guys in. Let's give them another chance. But when they stood up and said that, said that my God is able to deliver us from the flames, said that our, my God will deliver me from your hands, all of a sudden his attitude changed. That grace was gone. That favor was gone. He ordered that the furnace heated up seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the blazing furnace. Now see, we, we, the story really doesn't stop there. It, it, it keeps going. But I got to stop just for half a second. Here are these guys that are going, we're not going to bow. I'm not going to bow to the world system because there's a higher authority and that's who we submit to. And so if you feel like you got to throw us in the flames, do it. My God's able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. Where do you get that kind of faith? Where do you get that kind of tenacity? Where do you get that kind of strength to be able to say, but even if God doesn't save me from this difficult situation, I'm not going to submit. How do you get there? 
To, can I just finish with this this morning? This was not the first storm that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had gone through. This was not the first time that they saw God rise up, man, and protect them. Can I, can I just remind you, just real quick, can I remind you where SMA, where, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, can I remind you where they came from? See, those dudes, those guys were living in Jerusalem, and they had their church, and they had their language, and they had their customs, they had their homes, they had their temple. I mean, this, this was home. They got home, and when the Babylonian Empire came in, Nebuchadnezzar went in and destroyed Israel, destroyed it. Man, my friends from, from uh, all over the world have, have, have seen desolation in their different countries. Our Ukrainian friends more than anybody. But they were taken out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken out of their country, and they were brought in as slaves, as servants into this brand new country. And guess what? The food changed. The clothes changed. They even changed their names. And the entire time, God's hand was on them. The entire time, God goes, I got you. Who can take you out of my hand? They encountered the goodness of God. This wasn't the first flames they went through. Let me finish with this, and I'm going to ask the musicians to go ahead and come up here right now. They knew, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that it's one thing to be in a storm, but it's another thing to be in a storm with God. Why? Because they'd already encountered it before. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5 says this, and this is what I want to finish with today. This is talking about going through the storms. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Woo! How many of y'all have said that in the last week? How's your week, buddy? I'm just glorying in my sufferings. Not only this, but also glory in in our sufferings because we know what is it we know we know that suffering produces perseverance well i thought suffering was just bad luck no god doesn't play dice with the universe god has purpose for sons and daughters in this room today Because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character. How? There's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here's these guys that we don't even have to answer you. Why? You know our character. Where did character come from? Suffering. Perseverance. And it creates character. Perseverance, character, and character. And here's something that so many people can be lacking, and hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. But we also glory in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Whatever suffering you went through, it's not your last. Because God wants to build up perseverance. He wants to build up hope. Wants to build up character inside of every one of us. The character tests are going to keep coming because God wants to develop his sons and daughters. And my friends, hear this. 
He uses suffering to bring it about. Will you bow your heads with me?